It's the end of July 2024, halfway through this lawn care season. You can see the grass is doing pretty good. There's a white tint to it right now. I just finished doing my mesotrione spray humic acid um, for the second time this year and it chokes out chlorophyll production on the weeds. It also knocks back the grass a little bit, but it'll perk back up in about a week or so. But for about a week, it looks a little under the weather. I've got the Orion X7 cutting grass right now. And unfortunately, the Luba is sitting here beeping away with an air. It's saying that the charge area is not clear. I think the ultrasonic sensors are have some sort of fault and they're thinking that there's an obstruction in front of it when clearly there isn't. The, the front bumper's also fallen off a few times. Um, this is the original Luba with GPS only navigation. You can see the front bumpers got scraped up a little bit, um, ramming into this, this retaining wall block and some of these edgers when the positioning isn't perfect. It wants to drive into this area and really put a lot of pressure on that bumper and, and it's actually ripped it off a few times. So maybe I should be thinking it's a bumper problem um, but there is a self check and there's a little LED on here that says it's green and happy So I don't think it's that but you can hear it just sitting here beeping And if you're trying to sit out on the patio and even just ignore it, it's really annoying and you can't shut the thing off when it's at the charging station so I've got a couple, one test to do before I tear this thing apart and see if there's a loose wire or a wire that came off or something. I'm going to send it on a mow job and there's an option in there like slow touch, avoid, and direct touch. And I believe that's to set the sensitivity of those ultrasonic sensors and or turn them off. So what I'm gonna do is do direct touch and that means it uses the front bumper to sense obstacles instead of trying to use those ultrasonic sensors. If, if that works and it goes and cuts without that beeping, that means we got something going on with the ultrasonic sensors. If not, something else is going on, I think, or, or it still could be those, but maybe it doesn't turn them off completely. I'm not exactly sure, um, but let's send it on a mow job with direct touch, see if it does that. If not, we're going to have to tear into this thing. Even still, we're going to have to tear into it and see if there's something obvious in there. It keeps backing up like it thinks there's an obstacle in front, even with that direct touch. I think we're gonna have to get this thing on the workbench. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, it keeps maneuvering like there's an obstacle in front of it. Clearly it's not running into anything. Never had a problem with this area before. It's working as if it ran into something and then it's trying to work around it. So we got to get this thing on the workbench, tear it apart. See if there's something inside that we can, something obvious inside that, that uh, is causing this. It's about exactly a year old. Not really the reliability of something you want that almost costs $3,000. Hopefully we can fix it. On a side note, I did a dedicated video this spring on how to build this bird feeder with the planter and it worked out exceptionally this year. Very happy with it. So this obstacle detection could be a number of things. The bumper has it on front. There are these side buttons and these ultrasonic sensors. So we're gonna try to figure out what's causing it and hopefully we can fix it. The reason the bumper tore off is some of those impacts in the front 
with the concrete blocks and retaining wall, things like that. Places where it's not supposed to go, but positioning gets off a little bit and does it. I've noticed it's especially bad on very humid, hazy days. That seems to mess with the GPS signal the most. And on the edge of the lawn, um, some some small trees or bushes, stuff like that can get caught here and then it goes to back up and it just kind of pulls it off, which is interesting. There's some detents on here. Um, and when I try to take it off, it's pretty difficult. So not sure exactly what happens. I almost have to get back here and pry it with a screwdriver to get it off. So kind of amazing that that gets peeled off. There are these detents you press in, some electrical connections. So I guess it's possible maybe we didn't have a good connection there. There's a self-diagnostic in the app um, that checks the status of the bumper or that it's in place and it, it always gives a green dot. So I'm thinking it's not this, but could be. First thing I noticed, and I've noticed this in the past with this particular Luba, there's some water here. Um, so when I've picked it up in the past, you can kind of hear some water sloshing around and such. So um, it could be that water got somewhere on top and it just needs to dry out. Hopefully it didn't fry anything, but um, there's some grass buildup here, nothing bad. Um, these can overload and that will give you an error, but it will say in the app, you know, cutter motor overload. So I don't think that's what's going on. I think we have to get into the top, take the, the white off. You can see there's a part line here, but I'm not quite sure. We need to get at those sensors and get the top off. Not so sure that's gonna be the easiest thing, but we'll start with the obvious fasteners and see where we get. Disassembly is pretty straightforward here. We're going to start by removing the cutting discs. Below them are the guard assemblies, so we're going to take those off. Once the guards are out of place, all of the socket head cap screws that hold the under black underside to the white top are exposed, and you can remove all of those. They're all socket head cap screws. You can use an Allen wrench. In this case, I have a multi-tool that gets at most of them. A Allen key with a socket would be nice, but some of the holes are a little bit too deep for a standard one to fit down in there completely. Uh, so you might have to use a couple different tools to get them all out. Most of the fasteners go into plastic and have coarse threads. There's a few in the front here that thread right into an aluminum piece for the front axle. So those are more of machine screws or typical threads that are in a threaded hole in the aluminum. Next, you have to disconnect the front suspension. These again are socket head cap screws that are really hard to get at. None of my Allen keys could fit in there. So I resorted to a vice grip. Try to keep these videos as real as possible. So there were two obvious screws that I somehow was missing. I left it alone for a few hours, came back and it was like, they were filled with grass, but they were right there. So now the whole thing's free. Once the screws are out, the top will lift up easily, but don't rip it off too quickly. You need to disconnect this serial cable and an antenna wire. So I found it easiest to disconnect the serial cable and the antenna down on the board instead of on the top piece. But now you can see this is just an O-ring. 
to seal. It's not broken or anything, it just came out of place. So that serial cable goes here. All you have to do is pop these little retainers out. You can pull the serial cable out. That antenna was connected here with a small piece of tape on it. So you just have to take the tape off and then you can pop it right out of there. There's no retainer or anything. First observations, it's very clean in here. It's obvious there are no signs of water. Um, and one of the things when you listen and some water comes out of it, this compartment with the battery and electronics is sealed separately than the hubs and the outside of it. So I think water was getting in uh, maybe by the axles and around the edges, but not getting into the compartment with the motors and everything like that. So um, everything looks fine there. The ultrasonic sensors are up here. Here's all the wiring for it. There's a separate circuit board up here. There are no signs of looseness or anything obvious up here that say there's damage or, or loose wires for the ultrasonics. Um, so I'm gonna spend some time just going around here. It is neat to see how things are made. We've got this spring and floating design for the cutting heads. Um, just gonna look for any loose wires, anything on the circuit board that, that might have a sign that something is amiss. But nothing obvious, so here's the battery. We'll take a look at that, see how many amp hours it is and, and what that looks like. Clearly, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be replaceable in here if we had to, but I've had no issues with that. The drive motors are in the hub, so here's the power going from the controller out through the axle into the hub motors. So those axle assemblies look like they'd be fairly easy to replace if you had to. Yeah, interesting. All right, this is a, a nice big battery. We can see the individual lithium ion cells. Looks like there's two, four, six, 12, 24 individual cells. The reason they say this is not user replaceable, we can see right here, the positive and negative are soldered right to the board. Um, the connection on the board here, the positive and negative is here, so that doesn't look like easily changeable, but I guess if you got a new unit here, you could just uh, heat up that solder, take the wires off, and replace it. That way, most people are not gonna be feel comfortable doing that. It's not just a, a uh, quick connect or something like that, but um, definitely possible. I wanted to look at this too, because if I can't get it working, I was wondering if I could use this on my other robot more. Um, but unfortunately, the way this is with the integrated circuit board and stuff, I don't think it's going to play nice with the other machine, but good to know. I don't find anything obvious. Hopefully just uh, cleaning up the motors and that. I didn't need to go to this point, but I wanted to see the battery and what's in here and show you guys how to take it apart and inspect this thing. Um, and there's no water debris in here. I'm going to put it back together and hope that it works. I did kind of go to each one of these connections and press on them, make sure that they were tight. Doesn't look like there's any corrosion or anything that got in here, so I'm not worried about that. A few of them I was able to move a little bit, so that may be uh, helpful to our, to our situation also. Um, also note that power is live here yet. We've got the positive and negative coming into the board, so we don't want to connect anything with a conductor and, and actually short something out. So we got to be careful when we're working on this. Um, and there's not something we can just easily unplug to take the power off either. I think we could get this, but they've got some goop on there um, on the connection. So you can't easily, you'd have to peel that off and get the, the, the retainer off. But um, I'm just going to leave that alone. Like I said, I was careful. Just made sure I didn't use anything conductive when pressing on there. It was a pretty time consuming tear down, but it can be done. I didn't find anything obvious. So now let's put the thing back together. Next time we'll go a lot faster. Putting it back together actually went fairly smoothly, just reversing the whole process we used for the tear down. Miraculously, I had every screw that I needed. 
it's pretty obvious what place they go in. The hardest part of reassembly was getting the front suspension reattached just because it's a small area to work in. Okay, last thing, we gotta put the bumper back on. I gotta spray it up with WD-40 to clean it. And to lubricate things a little bit. Okay, we've got it all back together. Um, if this, I didn't find anything obvious. If this doesn't work, I'm going to try to take apart the bumper or see if I can buy a new one. Cause I think maybe something's stuck inside of there and it's acting like it's pressing on something, but let's put it back, see if it works. It appears as though it's happy. It's not beeping. So we're going to see if it moves. Off to a good start. Right after the teardown and here, one of my first mow after, the lube seemed to be happy. But I continued to monitor it for a few days, and lo and behold, the problem came back. It is still occasionally acting up here. It just got stuck in the rocks over here because if it thinks it hits an obstacle, it does this maneuver where it goes around. And here, just thought it hit something again. So I think I'm going to have to get this back on the workbench and look at that front bumper more. Taking apart the bumper was pretty straightforward. There's some Allen screws on the back. And then you can crack it open. There's two more screws with springs on the inside. And then we can get it fully apart with two micro switches on the front. We can use a multimeter set on resistance to test the functionality of these micro switches. The two far right pins and the two far left pins are for their respective sides switch. So if we put each conductivity probe on one of those pins and then activate the switch, when it's open or not activated, basically you have zero resistance, the circuit is open. When you depress the switch, it goes to high resistance. On the right hand side and the left hand side, these switches were working perfectly. So this confirms it's not the functionality of the front bumper. Replacing this wouldn't do any good. Since inspection of the front bumper didn't turn up anything, I went and got some actual contact cleaner and cleaned out the electrical connections in front really well. One thing I did find when I was taking apart the seal on the bumper itself, the rubber seal, was a bit swollen and not fitting correctly. So maybe some water got in here. Um, before I put it back together, I cut a small piece of, out of it so it actually fit well and seat. Unfortunately, when you cut it, you create a small path for water, but just wanted to test it out, make sure it's seated properly. Here's a close up of that seal, hard to get on video, but you can see there's a gap in there. I cut a little bit too much off, but at least it fit into place now. It's happy so far, maybe it was just a connection on the front bumper, the front bumper itself. Those switches seem to check out fine. There, it did seem like there's the possibility of water in there. That seal was too big on the front bumper and or swelled over time for some reason. The rubber did feel a little bit mushy. Um, even before using WD-40 or contact cleaner on it. So maybe that was the problem, uh, just falling on and off, got some water in there, debris, the contacts weren't good, so cleaning those, maybe it's happy, I'll continue to monitor. Hopefully, that fixed it. Unfortunately, that did not solve my problem. The mower's stuck in the edge of the woods now because when it's in this place with a no-go zone and a tight border on the background, if it senses an obstruction in front of it, it backs up. It backs itself into trouble sometimes.
If anybody out there has any ideas, throw them in the comments, let me know. I'm gonna keep working on it and I'll update you. But right now, unfortunately, the Luba after one year is kind of dead in the water. Thanks for watching. Adios.